Yeah, how are we doing? Good? Feeling good. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining me today. This is Tucker coming at you. You know, actually, just as I'm saying that, somebody sent me a comment the other day and said, why do you keep introducing yourself as Tucker? Your name's Alexander. And that is true, yes. My full name is Alexander Tucker, but friends and trail folk call me Tucker or Tux. I don't know, I just have always felt comfortable with that, but I don't really care, call me whatever you want. So let's get into it. This is my fourth week in my training towards UTMB, the 100 mile mountain race around Mont Blanc in Chamonix, France. And the more I do these videos, the more and more I get excited, especially since this is a very, very important milestone in that race training block. Today marks 100 days to UTMB 2023. Yeah, I think I can celebrate that. Yes, I think I'm allowed to celebrate that a little bit. I put a lot of hard work into this. I got more to come. So I'm getting excited and I'm gonna feel good about this. So far, I feel pretty good about it. This plan, working it and building it with my coach has given me the direction and the focus that I know is going to set me on the right path to make this the best race that I can run. And over the past few months, I have not just been implementing that plan, but I've also been doing it from all sorts of different places. And over the past few months, I've had the chance to implement that in my home in California, and then on the road in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Vermont, Florida. And then also, I'm coming off of five weeks traveling around South Africa and Namibia. So today in reflection of that, or I guess you could say because I have been actively involved in planning my life on the road, I just wanna tackle that idea about training while traveling. I didn't plan for that training, while I love alliteration. Basically about what it means to maintain your mindset, your practices, your lifestyle, while also maintaining a training load from the road. Oh man, that's awesome. I'm on fire today. Training load from the road, I love rhyming. I did not mean for that to rhyme, I swear. I'm really, really glad it did though. So I spend a lot of time running, a lot of time working, a lot of time watching movies, and I do a lot of that while also traveling for both work and pleasure. And if you fall into either of those yourself, traveling often for work or for pleasure, then you know how difficult it is to maintain and foster your habits and your rhythms while on the road. Routines can be tough to make and even harder to keep. It's one thing to keep a routine in your normal rhythm of home, but it's a completely different thing to do it around planes and jet lag and finding food and fuel to eat in places that you're unfamiliar with and doing it while you're staying with friends or family and fitting into their lifestyle and their schedule. And it's adjusting to pretty much any wall or challenge to the normalcy that you have in your day-to-day -day life. So as I head into times like that in my own training schedule, here are a few things that I find helpful. And the first is simply put, know yourself. As the great so Socrates, <laughs> oh, oh man, here I am talking about philosophy. It's okay, I don't know what I'm doing. As the great Socrates said, to know thyself is the beginning of all wisdom. And it really is true for any area of your life. If you don't know where you are, then you don't know where you're going. So start with the now, know yourself. And with this, you can make it incredibly practical. Take some time to brainstorm and make note of all the things that are optimal for your lifestyle. In regards to environment, what environments are either draining or energizing to you? With regards to food, what foods are most energizing for you? The best foods that help you fuel, that give you the best energy, that are most uplifting for you. I'm sure that one's an easy one for you because we can all figure out what foods we love the most and how they best fuel us in the process. With regards to sleep, how much sleep do you need to dedicate into your training to make sure that you're rested? Sleep and food are paramount to every training block and without them, we lose our minds and we don't last very long in our training because our bodies begin to break down. So we have to be very specific and clear on how we're gonna get both of them. In terms of time, how much time do you want to dedicate in your schedule to your training? These are obviously questions that can translate to just about anyone in any walk of life, but they're very specific to training because your training needs specificity in order to improve. So we have to get specific on the details in order to move forward. Which brings me to my second one, make a plan. Again, goes without saying, but not just having your training plan, but planning 
around where that training is going to happen and how to best effectively input it into your new remote lifestyle is going to save you a lot of time and energy. Plan out the aspects of your routine that are going to be most important to you. I'd suggest blocking out times in your schedule, things to consider like jet lag, like work, like if you work remotely or if you're on a business trip, how are you gonna build your training schedule around your work schedule? And then social engagements. Those can be really time consuming when you're with family or friends and they will require a lot of your free time. So you have to work your schedule into theirs as well. Try to consider the best times for your training. In considering the best times for your training, also consider the best location for your training. Put research into finding the best locations for your training block. You might be going to a place that you're unfamiliar with, so that's gonna take a little bit of research to plan out the best places for your training blocks. And odds are, if you are training, you also have a fueling plan, but make sure that that fueling plan is adapted to where you are and what your lifestyle is like in that moment. And if you have the chance, do some meal prep too, so you always have a meal or two ready for when you might need it. Now, if you have ever seen any of my videos in the past, you may have seen this line around this here is my full focus planner uh, I feel like I sing its praises way too much and I talk about it whenever I can it's just a diary I mean essentially that's all it is it's just a place to put your thoughts and your plan this keeps everything that I have it has my goals my goal action plan my daily to-do list my not to-do list my rules for living but it also keeps my training plan and the blocks of where I'm gonna put it in my weekly and monthly schedule and whenever I'm done with my training session then I put notes about how it went in here at the end of the day it doesn't really matter where you put your plan just so long as it's down somewhere so make a note in your phone or get a planner somewhere Write it down and refer to it. That way you know that you always have a process that you're following. And finally, whatever your trip throws at you, just roll with it. We can always do our best to make a plan and prepare, but at the end of the day, life kind of just happens. And when we're in completely unfamiliar environments, the best we can do is just listen to the spaces around us, trust that we are doing our best, and roll with the changes when they require it. Sometimes putting ourselves in these positions and stepping out of our comfort zones makes us uncomfortable. But I like to think that's where the real adventure starts. So work a plan for your training, and when things change, just adapt and roll with it. Oh geez, so much can go wrong. Yes, it can. Planes will always be delayed, phones will always die, you'll always lose sleep. And if you can prepare for the unexpected, we can see all of it as an opportunity for an adventure. So yeah, that's just a few things that I've learned, ultra running to the far corners of the earth, living out of backpacks and going from plane to plane. I hope that it's helpful for you. If you have anything that you have learned from years of traveling, racing, training, spending time on the road and in planes, and cars, and any other way you get from place to place, please leave it in the comment below to let us learn as well. We'd be happy to glean from some of your experience. And please, before you go, if you found this helpful, inspiring, or motivating, go ahead and tap that like button. And please hit subscribe so that you can continue with me on this journey to UTMB 2023. I've got a few more months, 100 days from today on, and we'll be celebrating every step of the way. Next week, I'm back home in California. Oh this is exciting. I'll be pacing San Diego 100 next Friday night. So I'll be checking in with you on that, sharing some of that story as well. So I wish you all the best. Thank you again for joining me today. Safe travels. As always, happy trails. And take care.